Hey. Um, so yeah, so I was just talking about purpose before. So yeah, just to have a really, really big, important purpose in your life, whether it's a mission to help people in your career, um, you know, whether it's just to be an amazing parent, um, whether it's, you know, just to, you know, give your child a better childhood than you had. You know, whatever purpose you have, you know, you know, find out what makes you feel excited to go for it and go for that, you know. So, yeah, so find that purpose in your life. Um, so, yeah, moving on to my next step. So allow yourself to be vulnerable. As addicts, what we try to do is we try to control other people, the people we're in relationships with. We try and control how often we have sex. We try to control, um, we try to control their people's behaviour to to suit us to make us happy. We try to um, change people. We try to, you know, we try and control things basically because we don't have control so when you give up control when you give up trying to control other people and you just allow yourself to be vulnerable in that relationship and see what happens and stop playing games and stop like trying to get them to like you get them to love you and you just allow yourself to be vulnerable Beautiful things happen. Beautiful things happen. They really do. So don't, so just allow yourself to be vulnerable. You know, you're hurting anyway at the minute. You, you're hurting anyway as an addict and you hurt it. And the thing is, when you're trying to control everything, it's, it's not fake. I mean, how you, do you want your partner to love you because you control them? because you're, you're making them love you through your controlling behaviour or do you want them to love you because of who you really are the vulnerable you, the real you because how long can you keep that act up for? It's, you can't and it's exhausting to do that just be vulnerable and be you and now I'm moving on to the comfort zone so you know push yourself outside your comfort zone as much as you can you know in, in in the other areas of your life push yourself outside your comfort zone in your career for example like if you push yourself outside your comfort zone in your career that's going to give you the excitement a lot of the time sex addicts stay in this cycle of addiction because they don't have other things in their life and they're just focusing everything on sex and relationships and being with someone and being loved and you know rather than if you find start to step outside your comfort zone and push yourself more in your career um, and your day to day lives uh, and, and with things like exercising your body and you push yourself outside your comfort zone and you're pushing yourself further and further all the time you know amazing changes are going to happen then there's a saying that life begins at the end of the end of your comfort zone. It's true. So just keep pushing yourself to do that. Moving on to the next point. Make spirituality an important part of your life. I make it the most important part of my life. I put my spirituality and my spiritual practice before everything. Um, I do that because it, when I put my spirituality first, my head's in the right place. If I have a day, like today for example, I had a quite a bad day today. And the reason why is because I didn't meditate this morning. If I'd have meditated, I, like, my head would have been in a lot better place, you know. So you have to prioritise spirituality in your life. Um, it's really, really important to do that. Um, and spirituality is really personal meditating getting in touch with that higher power that inner you you have all the answers you have everything within you it's just about remembering who you really are you know so you have to put that first um so that moves on to my next point you know pray pray every day pray for help in the 12 steps there's a step about you know 
handing your, you know, the will of your life, like your life over to the will of God. So allowing God to take that burden, you know, to decide what's best for you, you know. There, I, I just know that there is something more powerful than us out there and that, that, that there is a magical force at work and it listens to you and it answers you but you have to ask and you have to have a relationship with that force and that's, that's where prayer comes in you know but you have to ask for the right things and the thing is sometimes you might ask for something and God might be like do you know what you, you haven't learnt that lesson yet ready for that so I'm going to give you this experience first so you might be like oh my god why is this happening to me you know um blah -de blah but if you've asked for something you know sometimes it's not just handed to us on a silver platter all the time it's not you have to prove that you're ready and willing and worthy and put in the effort in i mean we're all worthy and that's probably the wrong word like you know, but what I'm saying is, you know, you have to ask, you know, and you have to be willing to learn the things and the experiences and accept them gracefully and, you know, and go through whatever it is you need to go through before you get to that other side. It's not easy. It's not easy. If it was easy, everyone would have the perfect life, wouldn't they? They don't. So pray, pray for help, ask for guidance, ask for help. Don't be lazy and just ask for things. Ask for help, guidance, strength to do it yourself. You do it, you do it. So just pray, pray as much as you can. You know, some days I, I forget to pray and then I pray and then my life's just, I get answered and I'm like, oh, why didn't I just pray? <laughs> like, why didn't I just ask? The, the more you develop a relationship with that higher power, however you see it, the stronger it gets. So just develop that. And that what, what's what I mean by harnessing spirituality. And as addicts, spirituality is so important to us. It, it is because we've not had that, you know, that, that stable upbringing and we need it more than anybody else. So, so do that. And this moves, moves me on to my next point. Find a spiritual family. So if you're an addict, I can guarantee, and people can say, oh no, I didn't have a dysfunctional upbringing. You know, sometimes we believe certain things to protect ourselves, but I can guarantee you if you if you have this problem and you generally have it you've had a dysfunctional upbringing so I would say as an adult find a spiritual family so I have a lovely group of people at my church I go to two churches actually um, find a spiritual family that a group of people who love you who are willing to um, accept you and, and not judge you in you know Obviously, you've got to find what fits with you. Not not everything's for everyone, you know. I really like Christianity, but there's lots of stuff that also doesn't sit right with me. I, I You know, I like lots of different, you know, you don't have to become extremist about one thing. I mean, you can if you want, if you genuinely believe everything. But I would say, you know, just keep an open mind in life, I think is the best way to be. And have relaxed beliefs about things, you know. I think that's a better mentality to have rather than being rigid all the time. Open-mindedness is, it, it, to me, is is so attractive, um, and you allow more in. Then you allow more experiences in, and you you're not limiting yourself. So, I would say, yeah, find a spiritual family. It will really help. It's a group of people who you know you can love, you can trust, who are there for you, who are going to support you. And you'll find it a really beautiful sense of community when you find the right place. It will make you feel great. Like, just having, like, a nice bunch of people who you can rely on, you know? You have good values. Good values that might be a bit alien to you. That, that have 
you know, people that have boundaries and things like that, things that you need to learn about. And you have to learn about it yourself, it's, you know, because you might not know about that yet. So, so that's, yeah, do, do as much as you can as well to develop your self-discipline and self-control. Like I say, just giving yourself things that you do every day at certain times will help to, to grow that self-discipline and self self-control. Um, I'd also like to mention, have, you know, do your best to overcome your feelings and fear of rejection. So rejection is a big thing for sex addicts. So they want to be accepted and loved and, um, you know, um, they just want to feel wanted, you know. Um, so what, rejection is usually quite a big issue for for addicts. But just become more comfortable with rejection. I mean, again, the therapy will help. There was a point where if someone rejected me sexually, like, I would literally cry my eyes out. Like, that's how much it would upset me. Um, whereas, y you have to change... You know, and and then an addict might just ne never, you know, try that again because they're scared of being rejected, or and then you know that they, they could go somewhere else or start looking elsewhere or whatever. You know, there are various ways people deal with with rejection, but I would say learn to overcome your fears of rejection. So however you do that is up to you, but. You know, just because someone rejects you, just 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 keep like if you part if you're a sex addict and your partner rejects you, don't stop coming on to them and suffer and just keep coming on to them and you know, continue to do it. You know, they they will say yes. Just be just become more comfortable with rejection. Put yourself in situations where you where you where you know you're gonna get rejected. Just to practice being more comfortable with it and realising that, you know what, I got rejected, but I'm still here. You know, I didn't die. Like, you, you, you just need to change your relationship with rejection um, and just make it alright to be rejected. Because it is alright and it doesn't mean that you're unworthy. It doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with you. It doesn't mean that you know, that the, they don't like you. It could mean lots of different things, but it doesn't mean what you, you, you think it means in your head. And the thing is, like all our emotions in life are all linked together. So you might have a like rejection here from childhood, a really big one, and then a smaller one here, and they're all linked together because that feeling's so similar. The more times you felt rejected when you were younger, the longer the chain is. And the harder the momentum, the harder it hurts. But therapy will help release a lot of that. And it'll fall away when when you change it inside your head, vocalise it, get it out of your body. Um, so you've got to change your relationship with rejection. It's a personal journey, but it's again, it's really important for you to work on that. So, so that's another one, um, just bear with me and I'm going to carry on. <laughs> 